Today I want to talk about a topic that everybody knows about, but most of you know it at a surface level, right? And that topic is dynamically allocated memory. All right, so how do we use it in a proper way? So let's first, let's start off with the three main functions that uh, let you allocate memory. First one is malloc, and I know you know about this one. So we're just gonna define here a pointer. So int star, let's say k equals malloc, and you usually give it a size, and here I'm just gonna give it size of int. Right, simple enough. And let's create a simple program here. All right, now that that's done, well, what I did is simply allocate some memory, um, initialized a value inside that memory that we've allocated, right, with, by dereferencing it, and then printing it on the screen. Simple enough, right? If I try to run this, you'll notice that we get the 17, the value 17, which is really nice. So simple and straightforward. Now, this code runs the risk of actually breaking and breaking due to outside factors. Uh, what's that risk, you say? Well, most people most people don't really uh, treat the case when malloc actually returns a null pointer, but because they, they think that they have enough memory, right, on their system, and that's not really a problem. But uh, let me tell you that that's actually, that could actually become a problem. Not because you don't have enough memory, I'm sure you do, and that's probably not the, case this is going to happen, but it's probably going, going to happen due to um, memory fragmentation. Basically, if, you're, if you keep on allocating and deallocating memory all over the place, you will have uh, blocks of memory that are split into multiple parts, right? And it, it might so happen that you want a block so large that it doesn't actually fit in any of the free memory spots, right? If you fit it there, you kind of go over eight bytes of the other array. If you fit it here, well, that kind of overrides 32 bytes of the other thing. So mm, you cannot really do that, right? And even though you might have a lot of memory, if it's really fragmented, if you really try to allocate a lot, a lot of it, you might run the risk of doing so. So the thing to do here always is check for null pointer. So if k is null, what we want to do is, for example, in this case, let's just return the error code one, right? And that basically checks if uh, we can allocate memory, right? It can happen even if you have 64 gigabytes of RAM, however expensive your rig was when you bought it, doesn't matter you might actually run into this. Of course, not with just one int, but maybe like, I don't know, an array of 500 by 500. Hmm. Okay, so that's one thing taken care of. Now let's take a look at another thing. Let's, um, let's try to allocate an array of integers, right? Just simply an array. So I'm gonna change this to uh, array. So I changed the whole code so that it supports 64 integers inside our dynamically allocated array. Now, we all we have to change is the malloc call. Here we can do size of int, well, times of 64, right? So we're just gonna allocate a, an array of size 64. Don't worry about the fact that it's hard-coded. Usually don't want that, but in uh, this example, it doesn't really matter. It's, a, it's not really a big issue. So after we've allocated the memory, well, how about we just print whatever is in there, right? We just go ahead and we don't do anything with the array, we just simply print it out on the screen. And here I have a for loop that does that for us. If I try to run this, well, you'll notice something interesting. You'll notice that I have, I have mostly zeros on the screen, but some of them are not actually zeros. Some of them have a different value than zero. That's leftover memory. Right. Whenever you actually deallocate memory or the uh, or your runtime actually deallocates memory, it doesn't usually clear it. It doesn't say, okay, from now on, all these 
a hundred thousand bytes are gonna be zero because that's actually not uh, cost effective, right? It's not efficient at all. So what it does, well, it simply says, okay, this block of memory is free from now on. And that's it. That memory is still left in there, like physically in there, but it's considered empty. It's considered garbage. So now when you try to allocate, you're gonna, it's going to say, okay, well, from now on, this memory is used by you. And that's it. It's not going to set it to zero or anything like that, right? So we have garbage values. Remember, this is actually very important. Now, to deal with this, traditionally, most people, what they do is just say man set, right? Our array to the value zero and our size, the size of the array, right? Simple enough. So it just kind of says, set everything to zero, right? I talked about uh, mem set and memory uh, manipulation methods in this video up top that you can check out. But it's very straightforward. All this does is takes in a pointer and sets every single byte to the value zero. If I try to run this now, you'll notice that all of them are actually zeros. That's really nice. But what if I told you that there's a, there's a way you can actually do this automatically without using memset? Well, let's see. So first things first, instead of using malloc, you should use calloc. And calloc is a uh, memory allocation function that is usually used for allocating arrays. Why? Because the first parameter is actually the number of uh, elements you want to allocate. So in our case, it's going to be 64. And the second one is the size of each element. And in our case, it's just the size of int, which is in on uh, this compiler is just four. Okay. But one really cool thing uh, calloc does is actually set every single byte to zero of whatever memory we allocate. Now this is something to be aware of whenever you're allocating large amounts of memory or very often you're allocating that um, because this is actually uh, hitting your performance. So use malloc if you want to not actually initialize all your memory to zero and use calloc if you really want that and you're also using an array. Of course, of course you can actually initialize uh, just one. <laughs> one uh, integer that is dynamically allocated by just saying here one, right? So you can actually use this um, for just simple types, not arrays. All right, so now that this is zero, we don't need this mem set. We can comment it out. And if I try to run this, you'll notice that all of them are zero. Even if I try to uh, allocate a lot of values here, everything is just set to zero and that's really nice. It wasn't the case for malloc. If I go ahead and change this back, well, there's a lot of garbage values as you can see, right? And they, they could be anything. They don't have to be ints, of course, in here. This might as well have been part of a string that you allocated like 10 hours ago or something, right? All right, so one more thing I want to talk about is actually memory reallocation. So what do you do if you, well, somehow you got an array, right? A pretty big array, let's say 256, and you've got an algorithm that takes in this array and kind of optimizes it. And it shrinks it down to like, I don't know, 64 uh, integers. What do you do in this case? Like you don't need the previous array, so you should deallocate it and reallocate the other one. Most of you might just um, allocate the new one, the smaller one, and copy over the memory. But there's a better way. And that better way is called realloc. The realloc function takes in a few parameters here. Um, first is the memory that you already have, so the large one, or maybe the small one, if you want to expand the uh, memory, you can do either way. So I'm going to say here array and I want our new size and that's in bytes. So we want actually 64 times size of int, right? And it will shrink our array. Now, don't be fooled into thinking that this is all you have to do. Just realloc the array and you're done. I made this mistake and it cost me 
tons and tons of hours of hard work to find what was wrong with my code. And the problem was that actually realloc returns a pointer and that pointer could be a new one. So um, the memory allocation system could say, okay, well, here's the block, right? We have the, we have the, I don't know, 64 integer block and we want to expand it. Well, we have the rest of the bytes available right in front of us. So I'm just going to expand this block without actually changing the uh, memory, the memory location. Without changing the memory, that means that this call, if we try to use array further on, like the actual address, it's going to be valid and it's not going to create any sort of problems. But if, if there's not enough memory in front, or for some reason, the system actually decides that, oh, if you want to shrink this memory, you'd better just move it over there because of fragmentation or whatnot that we just talked about. Then your value, the value inside our array, well, it's poof, it's gone. It's actually just garbage, just marked as deleted, as freed, right? So what realloc does is first, sometimes free array, and then it reallocates. So it says something like malloc of 64 times size of int, right? But this is not all the cases, right? It might actually uh, jump the gun and simply expand your uh, existing block, right? So keep this in mind. To use it, all you have to do is get the value returned. So in our case, uh, this one and store it inside the previous um, pointer. So I'm going to say array equals that. Even though you have to specify array twice, don't forget, it's just a single value, just a number that represents an address, right? And that doesn't change even if you pass it here, right? Now, one more thing to actually check is, of course, if the array is null. Even after reallocation, sure, there might not be enough memory uh, left that's not too fragmented, right? I talked about this previously. Same thing applies with realloc, right? Check for null. And now that we have this array that has 64 integers allocated to it, what we can do is simply, well, let's say print it on the screen. And if I run this, well, in our case, it's all zeros because probably it was reallocated, because it was allocated with realloc, we got that to uh, we got that memory all to set to zero, and when it did reallocate, since it's smaller, it probably just kind of uh, slashed a bit of our block, right? And it didn't really change the values themselves that are in there. Okay, so that's what I wanted to talk about, right? Just memory reallocation, setting it all to zero, and how to check if something went wrong whenever you're allocating uh, dynamically dynamic memory, right? So I hope you find this useful. Thank you guys for watching and well, see you next time.